In this lesson we're going to take a look at subtracting mixed numbers and our strategy will basically work the same way as adding mixed numbers but in the second example we'll see um, kind of a difficult situation we have to keep our eye out for and we'll talk about how to deal with it. For this first one here we have 8 and 5 ninths minus 5 and 7 fifteenths. All right, so of course first we're going to figure out what the least common denominator is for 9 and 15. And so we look here, um, maybe I'll just use the listing multiples method here. Does 9 go into 15? No, not evenly. 15 times 2 is 30. Does 9 go into 30 evenly? No. 15 times 3 is 45. Does 9 go into 45 evenly? Yes. 9 times 5 is 45. And so I can take each of these fraction parts and make them have the denominator of 45. So we'll have 8 and something over 45 minus 5 and something over 45. So we, also, we know that uh, 9 times 5 is 45, so I multiply the top by 5, and we know 15 times 3 is 45, so 7 times 3 on top of the other fraction. And so we end up with 8 and 25 45ths minus 5 and 21 45ths. So now it's as simple as 8 minus 5 is 3, 25 minus 21 is 4, and 4 and 45 have no common factors, so that is our answer. All right. Now let's take a look at this next one. The LCD is real easy to identify, right? The LCD is just 9. And so we get to leave 7 and 2 ninths alone. Um, and we know we need to multiply the top and bottom of 2 thirds by 3. So we end up with 5 and 6 ninths. Now we have a little problem here. Over here, the first whole number was bigger than the second whole number. So subtraction was easy. The first fraction was bigger than the second fraction. So again, subtraction is easy. But here what we have is the first whole number is bigger than the second whole number, so we know that we have a, a big positive number minus a small positive number, so I should just be able to subtract normally. I shouldn't have to do any plus the opposite type stuff. But this fraction is smaller than that fraction. And so when that happens, what we're going to do is we're going to borrow from the whole number in 7 and 2 ninths and add it to the fraction. Now we've already done this um, back in the first video in section 3.5, but we did it in the case where there was no fraction part here. Okay, So remember what we did is we would borrow 1 from the whole, and we made the observation that 1 whole is equal to 9 ninths. And we're okay with that because a number over itself is 1. And so that 1 that we borrowed becomes 9 ninths. Now in the earlier video where this happened, since there was no fraction part, we just threw 9 ninths next to the 6th. However, we already have 2 ninths sitting there. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding these two fractions. So of course, 2 ninths plus 9 ninths is going to give us 11 ninths. So we borrowed 1 from the 7, turned that 1 whole into 9, into nine ninths, and added it to this fraction here. A shortcut you can remember is when you borrow 1, just add the denominator to the numerator, and you'll get your brand new numerator. That's kind of a nice little shortcut, but it's important to understand what's really happening here. You're turning that 1 into 9 over 9 and adding it to the fraction part. And now, this fraction part here is bigger than that fraction part, so we'll have no problem. 6 minus 5 is 1. 11 minus 6 is 5. So the answer is 1 and 5 ninths.